Hi, everybody. My name is Sanjay Bodraj. I am an interventional cardiologist and functional medicine practitioner and founder of Well12.Health. Now, why should you have to ask for lab tests in the first place? So a lot of times doctors will check the same things again and again, complete metabolic panel, blood count, thyroid assessment, maybe a basic lipid profile. But there's so much more now that you can know about your health through blood work. And that's where I think these five new lab tests are really helpful. So a lot of times patients will ask me, hey, Dr. B, why do I have to ask my practitioner for these lab tests? Why don't they just do them anyway? And I think the answer is very simple. Really, it's just that in the conventional medicine training, we're taught this one size fits all, just check the same things for everyone and everyone's health patterns will make themselves known at that point in time. But now there's been so much more advancement in lab science and so much more that we can specifically tailor to an individual that I think it's super important to empower our patients and have you have a two-way conversation with your doctor rather than just him or her declaring to you whatever he or she wants to order so that you can feel empowered, take over your own health because nobody knows you better than you know yourself. And I really, really want you to be as healthy as possible. So the first blood test that I think you should ask your doctor for is something called apolipoprotein B. Wow, that's a mouthful, for even for a lipid nerd right like me, right? But what is apolipoprotein B? Well, when we look at cholesterol molecules under a microscope or with a device called the flow cytometer, they don't have written on them LDL, HDL. They don't, they don't give you an idea of what they are just by visualization. So what we tend to look at are the little proteins on the surface of the cells. Think of this like one of those NASCARs with the patches everywhere, right? So if you've got like like a Wonder Bread sticker on there, well, you know that that's such and such driver, right? If it's got a Home Depot sticker on there, it's so-and-so. So kind of similarly with lipid particles, we look to these cell surface proteins to allow us to know which are the good particles, which are the bad particles, and which are the ones that we're not really sure about called LDL, HDL, and IDL specifically. In the lipid panel though, we get a sense of the LDL particles through a calculation. So we don't actually measure them, but we calculate them. And that's based on old technology from the 1980s. So the cool thing about apolipoprotein B is that there's only one per lipid particle. And apolipoprotein B specifically lives on the surface of those cholesterol particles that are more likely to cause blockage in your arteries and more likely to wreak havoc and cause plaque. So by getting a sense of your apolipoprotein B, we know not only the LDL or traditional bad cholesterol particles, but we get a sense of all the cholesterol particles in your bloodstream that might contribute to atherosclerosis. And more recent literature has found that that is an even better predictor of your cardiovascular risk than just LDL alone. The next marker that I think you should ask your doctor for is something called C peptide, like the letter C. And basically what that is, is a molecule that sits on insulin before it gets activated. And once insulin is activated, the C peptide gets cut off and that's what allows insulin to do what it's supposed to do. Think of this like those little plastic tabs when you buy an electronic, right? In the store and you have to pull it out so that you can get the battery to make contact and work correctly. That's kind of what C-peptide is. And the cool thing about C-peptide is it allows us some idea of how much insulin your body has to make to get the response that you're getting. So most people will screen, most doctors will screen with something called a hemoglobin A1C. Raise your hand if you've had that before, right? So what that is, that's a marker of what your average blood sugars have been over the past 90 days or so. But there are a lot of reasons why that doesn't tell the story all by itself. So for instance, let's say it takes you 10 times the amount of insulin that a normal person should need to maintain a good hemoglobin A1C. Well, that suggests that you're already insulin resistant, right? You already have part of the metabolic syndrome. And if we just look at hemoglobin A1C, we don't really get a good sense that Boy, your body's really struggling to keep up with the demands on glucose. So C-peptide is something that's more stable, very easily measured, and it gives us so much more insight into your metabolic health. The next marker is something called gamma glutamyl transferase, or GGT for short. And what that is, it is a marker from your liver of basically the state of the union of your liver, right? So it not only assesses the liver function, but more importantly for our purposes, gives you an idea 
idea of what your toxic burden is. GGT is one of the enzymes that is involved in detoxification on getting these toxins in your body transformed in some way, shape or form so you can poop them out or pee them out or sweat them out. And if you have a lot of exposures to a lot of toxic chemicals, at your workplace or in your workshop or whatever it might be, GGT will often be in. And there is data that shows that people who have a higher level of GGT actually have a much higher cardiac risk. So this used to be part of the complete metabolic panel. In about 10 years or so, it just disappeared because most people weren't really using it correctly. Now you can definitely ask for it. It's done at most commercial labs and it gives us valuable insight into the state of your liver beyond the normal liver tests that are done as part of a complete metabolic panel. Do you feel like your get up and go just got up and went? Do you feel tired, brain foggy? Do you just lack your sexual desire? If so, your doctor is probably gonna check your sex hormones. And those will be things like testosterone or dihydrotestosterone in men, estrogen, estradiol, maybe progesterone in women. And that can tell part of the story. But another test that you should ask for is something called sex hormone binding globulin. And what that is, think of it like a school bus that carries around these hormones, but it doesn't deliver them anywhere. In a in fact, what it does is it binds your sex hormones up and doesn't allow them to be in their active form so that you can get the benefit of having these hormones around. And simple things like metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, chronic stress can affect your sex hormone binding lobulin levels. So if you're feeling any of those symptoms, it might not be that you don't have enough hormone. It might just be that the hormone that you have is bound up by sex hormone binding lobulin. And that's definitely something that you can ask your doctor to check. And finally, the fifth blood test that I think you should definitely ask your doctor for next time you see him or her is something called a 6-3 ratio, the omega-6-3 ratio. Omega-6 acids, omega-3 acids are the fatty acids that we get in our diet. And it's a state of the union on your nutrition. Most of us eat a lot more omega-6 acids than omega-3. And ideally, this ratio should be about 4 to 1, meaning 4 omega-6 to 1 omega-3. If you're eating a lot of prepped foods, a lot of things with inflammatory fats, that omega-6 ratio is going to be much, much higher, and that can lead to inflammation. And like all of you know, inflammation is bad. So if you do have an altered 3-6 ratio, what you're going to want to do is supplement with omega-3 acids in fish oil, or there are vegan forms of the omega-3 acids, but it gives us a great idea of where you're at nutritionally. So I hope that helps and I hope it gives you a little bit more insight into your health. If you want to follow me, you can follow me at well12.health. Otherwise, I'm happy to be here with Rupa Health. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I think it's super important for patients to take ownership of your health and really understand your body, right? Nobody knows you better than you. And really talk to your doctors in a two-way conversation about your health. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at well12.health. Otherwise, here's to hoping you have a healthy day. We hope you enjoyed today's video and please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos on health and wellness and to learn about the cutting edge of root cause medicine.